What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Mr. Hang562. Or you can just call me to win, like to win, not to lose. Anyways, today we're going to be talking about this bad boy right here. The 50 to 200. But before I get into that, I would like to show you a video of me going to Lake Emerald in Colorado. It's in the Rocky Mountains and it looks good. And here's the video. Check it out. All right, Mr. Haynes is going to play dad today. Um, I'm going to drive Miss Daisy. I mean, Art. Two hours, 16 minutes. Two hours and 16 minutes. Okay, so now that you've seen the video, can you guess which shots were shot with an iPhone or a GoPro or even this lens that I'm about to review? If you can't tell, then the GH5 and everything. I, di I didn't really color grade. I didn't really try to match colors or anything. I just shot videos, put it together. It's for my boy, Arthur. It's for his bachelor party. And, uh, you know, we just got wild in the wild. <laughs> But um, yeah, I was swimming in the lake and the journey there was awesome. Saw some beautiful sights. I shot a little bit of it with this lens right here. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to tell you the story of how we got there. So we drove there and then uh, I didn't really get to use the lens. I was shooting mostly with my GoPro and my iPhone. And then when we got to the lake, that's when I actually used this lens to test for the quality of the images and the range tests. So, there's a video of me swimming in the water and after I swam in the water, I came out, I was cold, but it wasn't that cold because I actually swam in glacier water before and it was way colder than that. And I decided, okay, so now it's time to chill. And I pulled out my lens and I started testing the image quality and the range. And the first thing I did was see how far I can see with the lens with my GH5. And so I put it on and I was just like shooting and I saw these two people walking by the lake and I was like, you know what? Let's test the zoom range. So I'll throw some b-rolls up for you guys to watch and uh, you can see how far it is from where I am to the people because I have my friend like you know kind of show like hey here's me and then there are the people walking uh, around the lake and you can see how far I can get with just 50 all the way up to 200 millimeters or 100 to 400 millimeters and the zoom range is good I say is not as good as the 100 to 400 though. Uh, the image quality between these two are pretty much the same. I mean, it's, I mean, you can see some minor differences if you really, really, really try to look for it. But overall, they give about the same quality. The reason why I wanted to review this lens was because I wanted to see how it would stack up against this 100 to 400 versus, look at the size difference. Okay, look at the size difference. And then if you want to really want to check, and check the lens creep as well. It's like really trying really hard and lens creep is pretty good. All right, pretty good. After I swam in the lake and we were hiking back and that's when I decided, hey, you know what? Let's try some photos with this lens. And so what I did was I pointed a mountain, I started shooting, they call it like shark tooth ridge or something like that. And you know, I'll throw it up on the B-roll for you to see and, and so you can see the image quality of photos. The color rendition is awesome. Uh, I love the fact that, you know, I can get that much range. And here's a kind of like a secret. If you shoot at f2.8 uh, on 50 millimeters, it's like a secret portrait lens. I think it's pretty cool because some people actually look at this lens as a portrait lens. This lens right here, this uh, 45 macro 2.8, I mean, you know, 45, 50, you kind of get a portrait lens along with a super telephoto lens. It's kind of cool. Is it worth it? I think it is because for me, like if I am like recording, let's say a wedding and you know, most people will be like, oh, you're crazy to record a wedding with that. Well, or, or even think of it uh, like a corporate event, right? If you use that F4, it's, it's still pretty good on the GH5. 
instead of trying to use the 100 to 600, a uh, 100 to 400 to shoot at 6.3. I've actually covered a wedding with the uh, the 100 to 400, and it, it did fine. Uh, but the f4 would be better, I think, right? Because you get more light and like send steady time or even reception. So that's just something to think about. Let's continue on my story here. And then after I took some photos, I was riding the bus back and then I saw these like deer or elk or something. I was able to get this first shot, which was just like butt shot. <laughs> Literally just butt shots of these animals. And I was like, oh crap, I didn't switch my lens fast enough. But then luckily, while my best friend was driving out and you can see in this video right here, uh, I actually shot my, my best friend driving the car and the, uh, and the, um, and if you look, that's me sitting in the car with him and shooting at 50 millimeters, like right here. And he was driving right there. And I was like one seat, one row of seat behind. I mean, look at the image. It's, it's like, it can be a portrait lens. And then, uh, I was fortunate enough to see like a whole bunch of other animals that were out there, like birds. Um, in the dark because it was like silhouette because I was trying to shoot but you know backlit and all that stuff but I mean you can see the image quality for yourself and then I saw more moose like packs of them and it was the lens was just perfect it was just the perfect distance I can get a pretty decent wide shot with 50 millimeters and I can zoom in and get some pretty decent close-up shots uh, at 200 millimeters you can see for yourself I'm not gonna tell you like oh it looks so great doesn't it I mean it looks great to me right you make your own judgment. There was a couple other things I want to talk about and pull up my iPad real quick right here. Zoom stickiness. Oh, zoom stickiness. The 100 to 400 is known to be pretty sticky when it's on the body. Okay. And it is true. It is true. It does take some getting used to and it's not good to zoom while doing video. Just zoom into what you need and record from there. Same thing with this. I feel that although this is a little bit smoother, I still feel that I would jitter the camera if I was trying to zoom in with this. But it is smoother and a little bit easier regarding the stiffness. And then the next thing is uh, it has pretty fast autofocus and it's good for event lighting and it's portrait possible. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you how fast the autofocus works and I'm gonna throw it on my other GH5 body. This one right here would be like pretty fast even though I'm just in my room. And I'm gonna point this at different stuff. Okay. So here it is, focusing on something green, something brown, something sunsetty, something nice black, something that is like a beige white. Oh, I actually took a photo. It has to have some kind of contrast to get pretty good autofocus. Pointing out my lenses that are close up, like pretty close up. So this is actually about two feet and I'm still able to focus pretty good. So let's zoom in all the way and then check the focus there. Takes a little bit of time. Something green, something brown, something white with color on it. Okay, something like my lights here. Okay, if I'm pointing directly at white and without an edge, it's hard to focus, all right? But anyways, I learned a lot about this lens. Uh, the most interesting thing I learned was that it was portrait possible. And that's something to think about. If you don't wanna carry a heavy lens, uh, then I would, you know, like, let's say you have, you're considering the 100 to 400 and you don't want to carry as much of a weight, go with the 50 to 200. However, I think for low light situation, like if you're shooting like really dusk time for, I know you're looking at it as a wildlife mostly, like birds or animals and stuff, definitely it works. Um, but for me personally, I would actually go with the bigger lens because I actually like the extra zoom range. You just don't get as much light. If you shoot in the daytime, the, the difference, there's not much of a difference between the two. And the price is about the same. So it all comes down to, you know, how much weight, the size, how much you can fit into your bag, and uh, the zoom range that you like. Yeah, if you, you want a semi-portrait lens that goes to super telephoto, 50 to 200 will do the job for you. And uh, if you want something that has more range, definitely go for the 100 to 400. And I'm gonna stick with the 100 to 400. I'm not gonna get the 50 to 200. All right, well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new. And if you learned something new, comment down below. Thank you. It goes a long way and it helps me. 
And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you are looking more for, I mean, this is more of my, like my vlog channel, but I also do gear review as well. I think I'm gonna probably do both because it's educational, I guess, for uh, the people who are watching. Subscribe. And don't forget the links for the gear that I use to produce this video and to, to go out into the wild and do my thing. They're all in the descriptions down below. So that's it. I guess we'll just hang out, get it, hang out another time. All right. Mr. Hang 562, rock, paper, peace.